And we're literally seeing an epidemic of these issues in the United States right now. Dr. Robert Melillo is the co-founder of Brain Balance Centers. One out of every 10 children in the United States now is diagnosed with ADHD. And that's a real increase. My name is Dr. Robert Melillo. My life's mission is to help kids and families with special needs. My wife, Carolyn, makes it all possible. Welcome to our family. Hello, welcome to our show. I'm Dr. Robert Melillo. This is my wife, Carolyn. Uh, today we're talking about Tourette's Syndrome. Uh, so we're going to start out with what's in the headlines because there's, there's been a lot of news lately. And one is that the CDC, uh, Center for Disease Control, just recently came out and showed that Tourette's has increased again to now affecting six per 1,000 children. That's a lot. That's yes. a lot. And it's increasing, just like ADHD, just like autism, just like OCD, all these things are increasing significantly. And a lot of kids with ADHD also have OCD and Tourette's. Like, I thought they were all different issues, but they're all connected somehow in the Yeah, brain. no, well, first of all, they're really all neurologically the same. You remember we did that drawing a, a couple of shows right. ago, and, and we talked about these loops in the brain. But essentially, the right side of the brain inhibits a lot of our actions and our behaviors and our thoughts, and the left side of the brain really activates those things. So what you see with these kids is that they have these weaknesses in the right side of the brain and they all have these incredible left brain skills. Sure. I mean, they're high, usually considered highly intelligent, highly articulate, very artistic. Right. Um, right. And in matter of fact, there was another article that came out that actually said that uh, one third of individuals with uh, OCD have Tourette's or one third of people with Tourette's have OCD. So that really speaks to that, that really when you look at ADHD, 70% of those that have ADHD have at least one other diagnosis and most commonly is Tourette's and OCD. So it's neurological. So people with tics, they cannot help it. They can't they stop cannot it. cannot control it. Right. And that's also, you know, why we, we need to do some sort of neurological treatment. You can't just manage it behaviorally. It's really difficult. Right, so right. another study actually showed that uh, we're looking at with Tourette's we have three times as many more males than females and you know this is what we consistently see with a lot of these right brain right. delays. Autism is five times more common in males and ADHD. And why? Um, well you know we had talked a little bit about it but basically it's because when we look at these problems they seem to most of them probably start in the womb and when the right brain is developing in the womb and for the first two to three years of life. So if there's anything that interferes with that the developmental uh, trajectory of the brain, it affects the right brain more than the left. But many of these people are also really skilled. But we also see that men are more right brain dominant. And what most people don't know is that we actually start off in the womb as men. And we need to be converted. So any environmental factors that affect that will affect the development of the male brain. I see. Okay, now we have a Twitter from LB Paints. Art has a great impact on children with Tourette's. Abstract art, doodling in particular, is relaxing and reduces symptoms. I've seen amazing results at various stages. In more severe stages, I suggest painting with safe materials. That is a fantastic suggestion. I mean, there are so many non-toxic um, art supplies out there anyway, but art, and our next guest will prove, is such an amazing um, right. field for somebody with Tourette's to go and what, into. What I find really particular about that is that abstract art is really a right brain type of art, where realistic art is left brain. So what they're looking at is art that stimulates specifically the right side helps. That's so that's fantastic. great. Right. Okay, so stay tuned because when we come back, we'll meet one man who has taken his day-to-day -day life with Tourette's to the big screen. His story when we return. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Rob Melillo with my wife Carolyn, and our, and our next guest is a successful musician, filmmaker who is living with Tourette's syndrome. Stephen DeJoseph has taken his experiences of living with Tourette's and filmed a new documentary called A Synaptic Adventure: Tourette's and Beyond. He joins us now. Welcome, Stephen. Robert, thanks for having me here. Well, you know, we were talking to you earlier, and and just your whole story is fascinating. But tell us about how this all kind of started with you. The, this convergence of Tourette's and and music and art. How did that start? Well, at age six, um, I had two things happen simultaneously, almost practically simultaneously. I was, um, I was watching the Beatles and I was inspired by the music and I wanted to, I really just wanted to be creative and explore a life of, of creating and music. And um, then simultaneously again was the, the ticking 
and urges and, and things that I couldn't explain. And that's so. when you started around six years old. Yes, so you, yeah. you found those two together. I think that's, that's really fascinating. So um, what I think is great is that you've put this down and you've collaborated with others to create this, this movie. Um, what's the purpose of the movie? What are you trying to get across in the movie? And, and tell us about the movie itself. Uh, the film was made out of a desire to communicate what I feel is a universal message, which was uh, adaptation, uh, collaboration, you know, uh, exploration. <laughs> uh, so because all these things take place when you have something you're dealing with and you don't know what it is. Right. So I wanted to get that across as a performer, as an artist and entertainer. So tell us what the movie is about. What, I mean, can you tell us a little bit about yeah. the, the script? Yes. Yes. Essentially, it starts out uh, saying that I'm six years old and I have all these drives and desires and I don't understand what's going on. And uh, it works its way into exploring each symptom in it with uh, musical and humorous uh, um, observations. That's great. That's, really yeah. That's fantastic. So um, I know we were talking, Carol and I were talking about, you know, what would you like to be the message? What would you like people to take home when they walk out of the theater and they see this film or they see it on TV? Carolyn had, had picked out a beautiful quote. I love this story in uh, Hayden's Film Institute magazine. It's a beautiful article on you, mm. and it, it, they ask you, what do you expect people to take away? And you respond, the world has enough destroyers, we need healers. Sometimes it helps to build on something like that. I want it to be like a portal into some aspect of life that we otherwise block out. And that's it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, I it's really so beautiful. Make you, it almost makes me cry <laughs> hearing that, right? Absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. Where did you get this strength? Who inspired you to be such a strong individual and go out there and, and, and represent this, um, I don't even want to call it a disorder because you're so talented and gifted. What made you want to do something like this? Um, I think what happens when you're driven by a passion that it, it, it makes up for deficits. <laughs> you know, something obsesses you and focusing it in a creative way, I think that's the thing that helps to deal with. So it's not so much a plan that I'm going to be this way, per se, for, at first, as a child. <laughs> right. Your first really inclination is that you see this thing you love and you want to be part of it, no matter what gets in your way, you know, go over any, any obstacle, you know. It's fantastic. It's very inspirational. It really is because you're saying you had ADHD, OCD, and Tourette's together, and yet you were able to create such an incredible message for yeah, everybody. Yeah, it's obviously resonating because it's just won an award, didn't it? Uh, at Several. The, yeah. 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 The, the Bucks County Film Bucks Festival. County Fil Films Festival. Washington D.C. Right. Yeah. It won Best Film. Yes. Or best uh, well, it got selected, which right. was a process in itself. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things we talk about and I talk about neurologically is that when you see something like Tourette's. ADHD, autism, they often are in people that have incredibly strong areas of their brain and these yeah. areas of the brain get out of rhythm um, and so you have these incredible talents so it's important to be able to explore those and use those as well as address the weaknesses as well. So what would you say to somebody that has Tourette's or even maybe more importantly a, a parent of a child with Tourette's like looking back and saying how would you have liked to have been parented? Would there be things that you would want your parent do? And what can they do to explore that creativity that their children may have? I would say to encourage them to practice and get involved with anything that they love doing. You know, um, one of the um, that that's a very crucial thing right there. A very crucial point I want to drive home because it's, I can't emphasize how much how important it is to have them focused on something they love doing and support them and, and get to know these different aspects of Tourette's and not just the one thing. Right. Yeah. And you were saying also art is a right-brained... Um, Stimulation. St right. So you're right. actually helping your brain. You're right. actually yeah. curing yourself right. in a way. By doing it. By yeah. doing you're this. participating in the process and it is a process. You yes. know? It's a process that, that you need to get involved with from the way you think about it to the things that you do with it. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, and so I will mention real quickly that this film What's happened is that the, my decision to do it changed a lot of things, and I had thought about it for years, and finally got to do it. Uh, I got into the Bucks Film Festival, then it grew from there. Um, my most re recent positive thing is that I got support from the Hayden's Films Insti Hayden Films Institute. <laughs> you say, um, and see, together we're creating um, an educational platform to right. uh, screen and yeah. You know. Well, how can because we have a few seconds left? How can people find out more about this? Where can they go? They can go to synapticadventure.com, okay. haydenfilmsinstitute.org. Okay. We'll tell them about the upcoming screening in May 21st. 
and um, all about our mission statement, you know, what wow. we're trying to do. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank I really you, appreciate it. Stephen and Joseph, great. thank you so much great. for joining us. When we come back, we will meet Nicole Greco from New Jersey Center for Tourette Syndrome and Associated Disorders. She will share with us what they are doing to help support those living with Tourette. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Dr. Rob Show. Our next guest is making it her mission to help support the needs of families with Tourette syndromes and to help educate others about this neurological disorder. Nicole Greco from New Jersey Center for Tourette Syndrome and Associated Disorders. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Rob. So uh, what I want to do first off is just tell people about uh, the center, uh, what your mission statement is, what your purpose is, and uh, um, you know, what, you, what you're hoping to get out of it for people. New Jersey Center for Tourette Syndrome and Associated Disorders is the only organization of its type in the country, I would even say in the world. Um, for anyone who is living with a loved one with Tourette Syndrome, a parent facing a child um, who might be looking at the diagnosis of Tourette Syndrome, NJCTS, the center, is really a one-stop shop, um, not only for families, but for professionals. We offer support programs and trainings for educators, teachers, guidance counselors, clinicians, doctors, nurses, school nurses, social workers, psychologists. If you were to draw a bullseye around a person with Tourette syndrome, we are looking to support, educate, train, and prepare every person who would come in contact. And of course, that extends to family and friends. We also are out to advocate for the Tourette syndrome community. Um, these are people in our neighborhood. They're our family, they're our friends. Well, I think it's important that people know that um, you're not an actual physical center, meaning that you're not a treatment center where people can go to, but you're really uh, a, a website and you're an organization that can act as a focal point um, to raise awareness and to give support, which is really so important because I think so many people are, are confused or really have lack of really good information. It's one of the reasons why we have this show. So I think it's so great that you're doing. So what would you say is some of the most important things or some of the most common questions that you get? You, you just raised a great point. Um, misinformation surrounding Tourette syndrome um, is something that, that we face all the time. Um, a lot of people are familiar with Tourette syndrome only through very inaccurate portrayals in media. Um, because of that, there's, there's quite a stigma attached to this disorder. Right. Um, the CDC uh, came out with a figure very recently that 1 in 100 people show signs of Tourette syndrome. When you apply that to the population, that, that's, that's tens of thousands in New Jersey alone. We're based in New Jersey. We serve the entire state, but we take phone calls from around the world. Um, when you get the diagnosis of Tourette syndrome, the question is, what do you do next? Where right. do you go next? What type of doctors do you guys see? Right. Uh, what types of services are available? Because Tourette syndrome is also associated with a number of, of other conditions, OCD, ADHD, and learning disabilities, depression, anxiety, and other mental health disorders, there are a number of, of needs that, that come along with that. So those are the types of phone calls that we get to the center from the family side of things. Of course, we also take phone calls from teachers. NJCTS has been offering an in-service program, um, the likes of which I, I really can't, can't compare to other organizations. We go into schools throughout the region. We will educate teachers, administrators, um, guidance counselors, any other support staff that work with children, but also we offer a peer education program which teaches advocacy and acceptance. Um, we're, we're looking to support the whole child. That's the education part of it. Of course, we also get phone calls from clinicians, from doctors, nurses who want to know the best way to treat their patients with TS. So, so really, we're, we're reaching out into all of those, those ter territories. That's great. So. You know, I know that there's so much information we want people to go through there. So again, is there any, um, you know, one or two tips that you would give to parents out there quickly and, uh, and then, you know, give us a way that people can get in touch with you. Give us the website. 
the best advice I would give is, is to reach out to the center, um, either on our website, www.njcts.org. Um, part of the mission of the organization is to offer a roadmap for families going through a TS diagnosis. So I would start there. There is wonderful information on our website. Our family support services are fantastic. Um, there are parent connection meetings. Um, for your viewers in the Philadelphia area and South Jersey, we'll be meeting this month in, in Burlington, Camden okay. County area. We, we serve a lot of families in South Jersey. Um, start with the website. Give us a call at area code 908-575-7350. Um, it, it, it's, uh, Every, every person's experience is different, but we will be happy to connect you with the well, information, great. resources, and the families you need. Really appreciate it, Nicole. I'm sorry, we're running out of time, but I hope people look at it. Nicole uh, Greco from New Jersey Center for Tourette's Syndrome and Associated Disorders. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't go away, because when we come back, we head into the kitchen for some gluten-free fun with Chef Dardar from Le Petite Temptations. When we return, before we go to break, take a look at the Autism Cares Foundation Gala happening on May 2nd at the Hyatt at the Bellevue for tickets. For more information, go to their website, autismcaresfoundation.org, and I plan on being there myself. Okay, we'll see you after the break. Welcome back to the Dr. Rob Show. Our next guest is a chef from La Petite Temptations. Jesse Dardar is here to show us how to turn gluten-free baking into fun. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank so you. We were talking that you're actually um, a French. Uh, you're a French chef. You're trained right, in France, right? Right. 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 I was uh, trained in um, in Solier, which is in Dijon, and then I trained in, uh, with Michel Trago and um, in Juan. And then I moved to Paris where I started my private chef business working for like ambassadors and uh, the com big companies in, in France. And I just got into art. The way we do things in, in France, we use a lot of uh, nuts to begin with. And it just so happens that a lot of our stuff that we do, uh, pastries, are gluten-free. Well, that's that's what I think was neat. You know, a lot of people are making efforts to be gluten-free, but you were saying it was you didn't even make that effort. It was more somebody raised your awareness that hey, this it stuff was, is gluten-free. And someone at, at one of my farmers markets that I uh, I, I I sell my things, they start uh, questioning me about my ingredients and everything, and it's like, wow, this stuff's actually gluten-free and it's tasty and it's it's not dry, it's not chalky. It's interesting. It's nice. It's what more do you have? It's, it's, yeah, so it's colorful. It, it's, it's colorful, and everything is made with like natural ingredients. It's really amazing. And Isa yeah. even thinks Isa it's, is it's a great. Chef. So let's get to some I of this hope. stuff right here. So I want to try this. This the, is the first one that we have right here is actually made with tofu. Wow. And we all know that tofu is, you know, it's kind of uninteresting. You you give it the flavor that you want to give it. This one is made with raspberries. The cake is with almond flour. And almond flour. With the almond flour, which is, I, I use a lot of nuts in all of my cakes, almond flour, pistachios. It gives like the texture, the moistness. Mm. And wow. It's delicious. Something you it's, would order in a restaurant in a, in a heartbeat. And it's, it's healthy and it's good yeah. for you. Hmm. And so in the, in the tofu, there's no it's, it's, gluten, there's no dairy. There's nothing. There's tofu. It's just mixed with tofu and some rose puree. Some rose. rose, some rose jelly. It's just just left uh, mm. to enhance to give it a little flavor. So it's aromatic too. Yes, That's because wow. tofu has no taste whatsoever. Right. So it's you know you just put like soft tofu in, the, in a blender, mix it, and it'll come back. It'll go back to its natural form, which is hard. It'll 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 get back hard. Oh, we right. have well, a little I gotta, chocolate. I to go to this chocolate cake. So the tell me about the cake. The chocolate one is this one is a vegetarian chocolate, chocolate where we have a nice quality chocolate with that's mixed with soy milk. You want to try a little mm. chocolate? Right. So it's dairy yeah. free. It's it's dairy free. And. You said it's also vegetarian, right, so that's right. great. It's now, by vegetarian, you mean it just doesn't I, have any. It doesn't, it doesn't have delicious. any butter. It doesn't have any butter. I've, I replaced the butter with a vegetable margarine, wow. and you taste the texture. It, really you don't. Good. You're not missing anything. Right. You're no, not, not missing at all. No, you're not missing it's, a thing. It's, it's all. It's really all about a nice quality ingredient that you start off with. I think it's a Twitter tip. Oh, okay. here it is. Okay, Disney Girl eight two six. Try them raw first with a great ranch dip made from Greek yogurt and spices to resemble ranch. Steam them and make them flavorful. There, she's talking about uh, vegetables, obviously, 
And that is a great tip. I know if I just put out um, a, a plate full okay, of cut so. vegetables and I put out honey mustard or barbecue, the kids naturally go towards it. So it is a great uh, tip to put out. Do you want okay, some so of this? Okay, so tell us about this one here, Chef. This one is my flourless chocolate cake. It is just chocolate with egg whites and this is heaven. And egg yolks. This is it's absolutely heaven. It's a rich chocolate. Oh God, then, so ag light. then again, then it's light, airy. Then again, it's just about you know, starting off with good quality ingredients. Wow. Starting off and teaching children when they're young how to cook like this and never introducing artificial ingredients is just a great way to educate them and have them enjoy desserts that are healthy. You don't need to put all those other ingredients in. They're not needed. They're, They're not needed. needed. So we were talking about this earlier. Like a lot of people, you know, flour. A lot of the flour, we can replace flour easily with cornstarch. Right. In fact, I do that with a lot of my cakes because myself, I like desserts that are very light, light and that won't weigh down on my stomach. Cornstarch provides like the same binding as flour, but it's lighter and it gives more air. And that's important because I think from a practical standpoint, people can say if they want to make something at home that is gluten-free, basically you just eliminate flour and mix it with another flour, like coconut, coconut flour coconut or nut flour. Flours. Any kind of nut flour will work. Right. It's just knowing, you know, the which nut flour it's going to absorb more moisture than the other. So what, what kind of a ratio would you I, use with that? With regular flour, cake flour we use maybe, um, it's like 90, 10% for, for cake flour. But if you want to substitute flour for cornstarch, start off with 80-20 and see how that goes. 80-20 cornstarch. 80-20, 80% 80, 80, cornstarch for 20% flour. Okay, that's And then great. you can just work your way, depending if you want to put a, a thick jelly or something else on top. You can always go lighter. And okay. Issa just had a bite of your macaroon. What'd you think she of your princess it. cookie? <laughs> <laughs> that right, well, means I want to thank Je Chef Jesse Dardar from Le Petite Temptations. How can people find out more about you? Uh, on our website, Le Petite Temptations, we we're in uh, Scotch Plains, where uh, the bakery's in Edison. And we amazing. do design a lot of um, desserts and stuff for uh, Great. Jersey City. And well, I hope people come and, and look you and so get much. your products. And thank you at home for watching. We'll see you next time. Remember, there's always hope. See you next time. Thank you.